Hello friends, welcome back to Digitalk and in another session of Ablogic Server Administration. So this session is specifically uh, designed for the beginners. I have been getting many queries from uh, many beginners and freshers that uh, we uh, have been going through the Weblogic documentations, many books, and then we know something about what is the logic server and then what is cluster, admin server, manage servers, but what is the practical approach? Suppose we are going for the practical implementation of the weblogic server, then from where we have to start, okay, and what are the sequence that we have to follow for the different configurations like for the installation, domain configuration, and then for other resources configuration. Okay, so uh, so I thought to, to, to create this session where I am going to guide you if you are going uh, to have a practical implementation of weblogic in a single server that is called the uh, uh, vertical domain and maybe in a horizontal domain. Then what are the steps uh, we follow when we go for the practical implementation okay so if you are not a beginner then definitely you are going to get some of the knowledge in this, this session as well okay so uh, so far there are three courses from the digital has been uh, uh, released on the udemy okay and the link has been provided in the uh, description of uh, this video as well and then certain open courses are also there so the first session is on weblogic server 12c and 14c administration second is on ohs 12c administration and third is on jboss ef8 administration so okay you can get the link from the description of this video and apart from that we have a 35 lab pdf document which is contained the complete end to an execution explanation and instructions of the uh, weblogic server okay and this is a self-learning uh, guide you can say okay where you don't need to have certain kind of expertise with you you don't need to go to any of the training and sessions and you can be expert by your own with these all log all, 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 all the pdf documents okay if you need all of this information then you can write to us digitalk on fmw.gmail.com we will send you the instruction how you can buy that one it is available on the bare minimum cost okay so let us begin with uh, the the practical approach of weblogic server so if suppose that you have got some theoretical knowledge and then you would like to go for the implementation of the weblogic server so uh, it's a very straightforward the first thing what we do is we do the installation of the weblogic server in a machine for example i have a server with ip address 192.168.4.1 the first thing what i need to do is we have to install the weblogic server right and for that we have to create a directory for the installation and that we refer as oracle home okay that that this this particular term you will get everywhere oracle home so oracle home is the base directory where we install the weblogic server okay and we define this variable as oracle underscore home this location could be any of your choice okay and this is a base directory when this is the location when we specify when we do the installation of the weblogic server and for the installation now we are getting a generic installer so what is the meaning of generic installer that is it is the same installer that you can use for the linux or unix type of machines and same installer you can for the windows as well okay so only thing what you need is you need a certified java so once the certified java is installed and then you have a generic installer that comes with the dot jar extension you can initiate the installer with the command java hyphen jar and the name of the installer okay and this will initiate your uh web logic installer and then you can follow few the screens for uh, the instructions and the important uh, uh, parameter that you need to specify during the installation is only is the oracle home the location where you are going to install the web logic server okay so after the installation once your installation is complete the second important task is you have to create a domain because domain is a collection of every resources right and if we are going to uh, manage our web logic server the first thing that we need to create a domain completely after the installation okay so once your installation is completed for that you will get a script uh, that is called config.sh okay which we use for uh, uh, for the configuration of the domain and which is also called the configuration wizard the location of configuration wizard file is your oracle home that means this is the location where we have installed the web logic inside that you will have a folder called oracle underscore common and then inside that you will have a folder called common and then bin inside bin you will have a file called config.sh and this file will be used for the configuration of your domain right so that means once your installation is complete go to this location initiate the config.sh script or the wizard for the configuration of the domain and then you have to follow the instructions but all the uh, uh, resources that you would like to configure in your domain the first thing what we uh, configure in when we go for the configuration of the domain is the admin server okay so each domain will have only one admin server okay and admin server is the central point of contact which is used for the complete end-to-end -end management of your complete domain okay so each domain will have only one admin server 
and each domain will have only one admin console which is deployed on your admin server okay so which can be accessed with the uh, http colon double slash and the the ip or the dns of the machine where you have installed the web logic and your admin server is running then colon the port of web logic admin server which is the default 7001 and then slash context is console so this is the way how you can uh, access the admin server once the services are started okay so important point you have to make sure here is that uh, each domain will have only one admin server and there would be only a one admin console okay so after that what we do we create the managed servers and there is no limitations of creating the managed servers you can have a n number of managed servers in a domain but again that depend on the configuration of the hardware of your machine because every managed server take the resources of your machine right like the cpu time your uh, uh, your processor and your ram for the jvm right so you can create n number of managed server but again restricted to the kind of a configuration of you have in your hardware right so suppose that we have created the four managed server and then we can define all the four servers in a cluster okay so why we define the servers in a cluster that means it is a grouping of your servers all together why we are doing the grouping is for easy management high availability and failover what is the meaning of easy management is that suppose that you are doing a certain kind of a configurations if we define a template for the uh, for the server then we can do the centralized configuration of the all of the each and every server if we are going for the deployment of an application then instead of going for the deployment on each and every server separately what we can do is we can deploy the application on the cluster and once you select the target as cluster during the deployment it will automatically get deployed on each and every managed server right there are a lot of benefits of that when we go for the clustering another is the high availability that means if we have similar kind of applications similar set of applications running on the cluster right if you are any of the managed server goes down your application will be accessible from the other managed servers okay this is called the high availability and then other important concept or feature you can say that we get in a cluster is the failover for example if 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 any end user access any of the website which is deployed on your uh, managed servers in a cluster okay and if at a particular time the session is connected with the managed server one and then user is doing certain kind of activities on the session uh, maybe it is a uh, e-commerce website where the user has added many of the items in his shopping cart by going through here and there after uh, certain duration of time okay and in between suppose the managed server one got crash where the user session was connected so what will happen in that case the complete session of the user along with the data of the session whatever the data that has been in the session that means for example you will have a lot of uh, items that you have added in your shopping cart that is in the session so complete session of the user along with the shopping cart data will have to be failure to some other server in the cluster for example it could be on two server two could be on server three or server four okay so only thing is that end users should not face any kind of a difficulty otherwise if you are not in a cluster if you don't have a failure mechanism if your session is connected with server 2 and anytime that server get crashed then the data from the shopping cart will be get removed and the user will be thrown on again on the front page of your website which is not an ideal situation when you are dealing with a business right so this is why we use the cluster where we can have a multiple servers in the clusters and apart from that once we do the domain configuration the other resources may you may heard about data sources and then deployment machine and node manager configurations jms configuration etc so whatever the configuration is there that you can configure from the admin console uh, from the configuration wizard as well or when once you create the domain you can have a bare minimum configurations by using the configuration wizard and then you can configure all of these resources later from the uh, using the admin console okay so this is the basically practice that we follow generally what we do is when we create a domain we uh, configure the admin server along with dot we configure our managed servers along with the machine and node manager right and then what once it is done after that we access the admin console and then we do all of the configurations like uh, data source configurations whether we do the deployment from the admin console we configure the jms resources work manager so all other configurations that we follow the admin console for the configuration right so uh, this is the way how we uh, 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 implement your uh, web logic server in a single domain okay and after that uh, once your uh, server or domain is created we have to start and stop the servers right so that means if you are going to start and stop the server the first thing is we have to start the admin server first right because your managed server contact the admin server okay if it is not an standalone or uh, msi mode okay so to start and stop the servers you will have a folder called bin inside the domain there you will get all of the scripts okay so once we initiate the configuration wizard 
for the configuration of the domain. Just like we have given a location for the Oracle Home, we have to give a location for a domain as well. One make sure the location of your domain should be outside your Oracle Home. Okay, it is not the right practice to have a domain inside the Oracle Home. So you will have to create a, a domain outside your Oracle Home. Okay, you can specify it in any directory of your choice. So go inside that domain directory and then you will have a bin folder. Inside that you will have a script called start weblogic.sh. This is script will be used for starting of your admin server. Okay, and to start the admin server, you have two methods. Either you can start from the admin console or you can start using the script, which is again inside the bin directory. And for that, we can use start managed weblogic.sh. So for starting the managed server, we have two different uh, ways. Okay, one is we can start from the admin console, other you can start from the script as well. Okay, so now if you have an installation and if you have created a domain from a single installation, there is no limitation to create the domain as well. As I said, in a single domain, you can create multiple managed servers. Again, it depends on your hardware configurations. Similarly, to save your cost because you have to pay a licensing cost for the each and every installation of the WebLogic server, right? So to save the cost if it is not a production environment then you can have a single installation of a weblogic server in a machine and on top of that you can create multiple domains okay and for again if you are going to create a separate domain second domain from the same installation so installation is already there so you have to initiate the configuration wizard again and then you can follow the same thing that we have followed in the first domain okay so by this way we can have a second domain also in the same machine with using the single installation and why we are going to use that to save our cost and maybe we are in the development phase we are in the testing phase right so for that we can have a uh, domain for the development environment and second domain for the testing environment and again I, we can have a third domain as well from the same installation again there is no limitation to create a number of domain from the single installation it again depend on the hardware configurations okay there are certain downsides of that one for example if you are going to uh, uh, for patching okay so for patching you have to uh, shut down your complete domain right because the patching is done on the files that has been installed inside the oracle home so if you have a single installation and then you have a development environment is running your testing environment is running so that means you will have an outage at the same time for your development environment as well as for your testing environment because you are going to patch your environment this is one of the downside of this one okay but however you can save your cost if you, it is a uh, non-production environment Right, so that you can bear a certain amount of downtime for your uh, pre-prod environments at the same time. Okay, so this is the approach that we follow uh, for the installation of the WebLogic server in a single machine. Right, so now what we discuss is that we have a multiple managed servers for the high availability. If one of the managed server get crashed, your other server will be available in the cluster to take the request. Right, but what will happen if your machine get crashed? If your server get crashed, you have a complete installation you have a complete managed server that means all of the managed server are in a single machine okay so you have a high availability at the application level but you will not have a high availability at the hardware level because if your single machine where everything is running if it if, if that machine get crashed then that means everything get get crash your development environment your testing environment nothing will be accessible right so for that one we have to go for a multi-machine configurations that means we need at least two machines for the high availability of the hardware that means if one of the machine get crashed you will have the application accessibility from the other machine so what approach we follow about this one this is called the horizontal clustering as well we have to do the installation of the web logic on both machines ideally on the same location okay and then once we create the domain using the same configuration wizard okay and there we select the uh, clustering option and after the clustering option, what we do is we configure the machines and node managers and we create the managed servers where we specify the listen address of the second machine. Okay, for example, if I am creating two managed servers, so for first managed server, I will create, I will add the listen address of the my server one. Similarly, if I create the managed server two, to will to which machine that 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 managed server I will assign the listen address of my second machine. Similarly, when I go for the configuration of the node manager, okay, so then I there I have to create two machines so that I have a two manager node manager. One is running on machine one, second is running on machine two, right? So to first machine or you can say to first node manager, I will assign the IP address of my machine one, and to second node manager, I will assign to IP address of machine two. And during the assignment of the managed server to my machines, what I will do? Whatever the managed server that is running on my machine one, I will assign it to machine one, or you can say to node manager one. 
and whatever all the managed server that is expected to run on the second machine i am going to assign it to my node manager 2 okay so similarly you can create a domain using the configuration wizard then you will have a single admin server irrespective of the number of nodes or servers you will have in a horizontal cluster admin server will always remains one and you will have only one admin console okay so you will have a cluster okay that will be spanned across your two different machines so it could be multiple machines okay i am taking the example of two machines only okay and suppose that i have managed server one and two which will running on machine one and server three and four which is running on machine two right and then we can configure the other resources and once we configure the resources then we have to define a target for all of the each resources and to target we can assign the cluster so that means if we are assigned to the cluster that means the all the resources are available for each and every managed server which is running on the cluster even they are on the different machines and then to start and stop your admin server you can use the start weblogic.sh okay and to start the managed server same Either you can start the manage server from the admin console or you can start it using the start manage weblogic.sh. Okay. So similarly, if you are uh, going to start your manage server using the command line that is with the start manage weblogic.sh, so you have to start fire this command separately on each and every server because I have two manage server which is running on machine one. So I have to go to the bin directory and then I have to start use the command start manage weblogic.sh when I'm going to start manage server one and two. Similarly, to start the manage server 3 and 4 with the help of scripts, I have to go to inside the domain bin directory on machine 2 and again I have to fire the same command which I am, which I am firing from the machine 1 to start my manage server 3 and 4. But if you are starting your servers from the admin console, then you don't need to navigate to each and every machine manually. Okay. So whenever we start the manage servers from the admin console, it takes the help of node manager to start the manage servers. Okay. So that means if you are uh, giving a command from the admin console to start your uh, managed server. So suppose that if you the admin server has to start the server 3 and 4 which is running on node 2 or machine 2. It will take the help of node manager. So admin server will first connect to the node manager which is running on server 2. And then that particular node manager will fire the command to initiate or starting the managed server 3 and 4. Similarly. If you are starting the managed server, which is running on the machine uh, one, where your admin server is also running, it will also take the help of node manager and then it is going to start your managed server. So important point, what you have to make sure here is that if you are starting your managed servers from the admin console, irrespective of the managed server, whether it is running on the same machine or on a different machine, it is going to take the help of node manager. Node manager will always come in picture if you are going to start your managed server from the admin console. If your node manager is down, Okay, then you will not able to start your managed server from the admin console. So this is one of the requirement when you are going to start your managed server from the admin console. Okay, and to start, as I said, to start your managed server from the script, you have to log in to the each and every box. If you are not going to start from the admin console, you have to log into each and every server, go inside the bin directory, and then you have to start. You have to give the command start manage weblogic.sh. The complete syntax is start manage weblogic.sh in the linux and dot bat on the windows after that you have to give the name of your managed server and after that you have to specify the complete url of your admin server for example http or https colon double slash the ip or dns of the machine where your admin server is running colon the port of your admin server and then slash console or you may avoid the console as well this is not required so it will going to start your uh, admin uh, managed server from the command line Okay, but if you are starting from the uh, admin console, which is the uh, most of the time the practical approach that we follow, we start most of the time from the admin console. So for that, you have to make sure your node manager is up and running on each and every host. So this is the practical approach of the implementation of the web logic from scratch, from installation to the complete domain configurations. And thanks for watching this video.